Division of Inquiry into the sale and purchase of the Motor Care Wolf. Before I get through the tedious task of dealing with the conduct and process of the hearing, I would like to make a few remarks. Firstly, I would like to thank especially both Council Assisting the Commission, Secretary, the Technical Team, Legal Secretary, and my associate who have worked so hard to get us to where we are at present. Their support has been quite remarkable, one that won't easily be forgotten, but also it will go down in the history of this country during our time and age. Secondly, I would like to welcome all the various media outlets who are here with us this morning for the important coverage in reporting this proceeding and the commencement of the hearing. Thirdly, and not forgetting the representation of different groups and interested persons who saw the need to be present this morning. I look forward to your participation now and in months ahead. Fourthly, I observe the catchphrase phrase making PNG the richest black nation, Christian nation. where no child is left behind. This catchphrase appears to encapsulate the eight-point plan of the government. Whilst I do not anticipate to dwell on the details and merits of Take Back PNG, the underlying principles are very important to the success of this great nation of ours. I also made special reference to the statement which reads, and I quote, I make the further observation that the change of government arose from a collective desire to take back PNG from the hands of people who practice greed nepotism and encroism, allowing for only a few individuals, companies, businesses, and urban areas to gain at the expense of the vast majority of Papua New Guineans. End of quote. With these remarks, I'm encouraged to sit here this morning to contemplate on its significance. And I do hope you too. Let me now dwell on the major key points of my talk this morning. Number one, statement of case and terms of reference. As Commissioner, I welcome the decision by the Prime Minister to establish the inquiry. I now turn to the statement of case and terms of reference as gazetted in the National Gazette number G851 and G852 of 2021, published on 9 December 2021. And I quote, Commission of Inquiry into the Sale and Purchase of the Motor Care Wharf to Sticker Julian Tolik, Commissioner and Chairman. Introduction 
In 2020, the National Executive Council resolved to endorse the Prime Minister's intention to convene a commission of inquiry into the sale and purchase of Motor Care Wharf. The appointment of a commission of inquiry was deemed necessary by the Prime Minister to establish the facts surrounding the agreements and related transactions valued in excess of one billion, underpinning the relocation exercise, including all persons and entities involved. The Prime Minister continues to maintain his view that the appointment of a Commission of Inquiry into the sale and purchase of motor care wharf is for a public welfare. The objective, the objective of the Commission of Inquiry is to inquire into the established, into and establish the facts surrounding A, the decision as to the relocation of the Port Mosby Wharf, B, the decision as to the selection of Motu Care Wharf as the preferred location, relocation wharf site, C, the decision as to the acquisition of motor care wharf and related funding arrangement valued in excess of one billion and the individuals and entities who were instrumental in the negotiation or what we classified as the middlemen involved for and on behalf of the state and its instrumentalities how were they engaged and how they were paid as fees for the services as brokers and negotiators. A, whether breaches of mandatory constitutional requirements have occurred and whether there was negligence on the part of leaders and persons involved in the various agreements and related transactions underpinning the relocation exercise. The ultimate objective of the Commission of Inquiry is to establish whether there were breaches of PNG laws and constitutional requirements in the process of negotiation and approval in the relocation of the Port Mosby Wharf and accusation of the Motor Care Wharf and also establish whether PNG as a country had suffered as a result of this deal, and whether the persons involved in the deal can be held accountable for the actions. Terms of reference, know you that I, Honorable James Marape, MP Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea, reposing confidence in your integrity and ability to do so by virtue of the powers conferred by Section 2 of the Commission of Inquiry, Act Chapter 31, and all powers me enabling hereby direct the Commissioner and Commission to inquire into the following matters. Number one, the Commission shall inquire into make findings and report on the following matters. A, when was the decision made to relocate the Port Mosby Wharf to Motor Care Wharf? Who made the decision to relocate the Port Mosby Wharf to Motor Care? What was the rationale for the relocation of the Port Mosby Wharf to Motor Care? What were the terms and conditions of the decision to relocate the Port Mosby Wharf to Motor Care Wharf. Whether due and proper legal and administrative processes were followed in the sale and purchase of the Motor Care Wharf, including but not limited to, one, how was the process commenced? What process was utilized? Who was involved? 
How was the whole transaction structured and arranged? Who was the financiers of the entire transaction? What were the terms and conditions of the entire transaction? What was the value of the whole transaction? What processes have been utilized in the past to obtain finance to transactions similar in nature? And recommendations for the prosecution of any illegal activities, including but not limited to the recovery of monies lost through any illegal, criminal, or negligent conduct in the entire transaction. These terms of reference may be added to, varied, and amended from time to time. The Commission shall use its best efforts to conclude its inquiry and shall make a full and faithful report on and recommendations concerning the aforesaid matters and transmit the same to the Prime Minister after concluding its inquiry. The provisions of the Commission of Inquiry Act, Chapter 31, shall be applicable for the purpose of this inquiry. The Commission may hold public and private hearings in such manner and such locations as may be necessary and convenient. All organs of state, institutions, and stakeholders are required to cooperate fully with the Commission. And I further direct that the inquiry be held in a national capital district or at such other places in Papua New Guinea or elsewhere as you may appear necessary and expedient. And I further direct that the inquiry shall be held in public but I approve that you may permit to be given in private any evidence that in the course of your inquiry, you, in your absolute discretion, consider needs to be given in private in accordance with Section 2.5 of the Commission of Inquiry Act, Chapter 31. And I further direct that you shall commence the inquiry without delay and proceed therein with all dispatch and render to me your final report within six months from the date of commencement of hearing. And I further direct that this instrument relating to the terms of reference of the Commission of Inquiry into the sale and purchase of motor care wolf supersedes any previous instrument issued under my hand. Dated this 11th day of November, 2021. I now move on to our roadmap. At this stage, I said I brought outline of this commission roadmap, which consists of five phases. The first phase is summons, or what we call production phase. The issue of summons, which were already in process, dated Friday 10 December to Thursday 23 December 2021. We also anticipate the return of summons on Monday 17 January 2022 to Friday 31st January 2022. Our investigation phase commences in February and March 2022. That include our councils and other technical offices. Our number three is the public hearing phase, which is targeted for March and April 2022. 
Then we move on to the fourth phase, which is report writing phase, which is targeted for April, May, and June 2022. And finally, our fifth phase is for the report delivery phase, which is targeted for 16 June 2022. In conclusion, it is imperative that most important aspect of opening this inquiry is to emphasize that it is an inquiry, it is not a court, it is not conducting trials, it is not about imposing judgment on a person or bodies. It is gathering evidence on the matters which have been referred to it is also, it can come to conclusions of facts and make recommendations as a result of those findings. Further to that effect, the Commission of Inquiry does not impose judgments. It does not impose penalties, noting in fact said or given in evidence before a Commission of Inquiry can be used against the person in any civil or criminal trial. This inquiry is an inquiry for the interest of the public. It makes its report of its finding and recommendations of necessary or appropriate action about the conclusions in it finds. This may include changes in department financial procedures or government procedures or legal procedures and if an error or suspicion of criminal activity is found, it may make recommendations as in the case of my inquiry as to prosecution. Once again, I thank you all for your attendance this morning. And as we proceed further, I simply pray for God's love, mercy, and grace to allow the reign of his Holy Spirit during the entire hearing. May God richly bless you all. I now invite the council assisting to address the inquiry. Good morning, Commissioner. May it please this honorable com commission. Council's name is Gerolo, initial G. I act as council assisting. My co council assisting is my friend, Mr. Kipa, spelled K I P A. Initial M for Maleva is also council assisting. Commission, I also wish to record the attendance of the secretary, Mr. Jack Nayak, who is also in attendance this morning. We welcome your opening remarks, Commissioner. And with, with, with that, we wish to outline a number of administrative matters that we wish to bring to the Commission's attention. Firstly, in terms of the recording of this proceedings, we note that the proceedings actually being live streamed through Facebook. Now there is a website that's been set up and, is, and it will be uh, functional and operational in due course. The website is www.small, this is all in lowercase rather, 
I'll, I'll repeat that. It's all in a lowercase. It's www.coimotukeawharf. That's coimotukeawharf.com. Now, Commissioner, it is anticipated that the, the website will actually publish a number of matters, including, obviously, the profile of yourself, the Commissioner, the terms of reference and statement of case relating to this inquiry. There will be also matters dealing with the practice and procedure as to witnesses, production of evidence, and the conduct of the hearing generally, and also the roadmap that, the commission, that your Commissioner has referred to that will also be published on that website. Now in terms of, in terms of kick-starting the, the commencement of this hearing this morning, um, co Commissioner, uh, I will now hand, to my, hand over to my friend, Mr. Keeper, to address the Commission in terms of uh, the summonses that have been issued as per the roadmap that uh, you had outlined earlier. There are actually four summonses returnable this morning, and my friend Mr. Kipper will deal with two of those summonses, and I will deal with the balance of the summonses. Otherwise, those are the matters that are the agenda for this morning in terms of the, the uh, conduct of this inquiry for purposes of this morning's hearing. So I now invite my friend Mr. Kipper to address the Commission. to uh, summons number one. Uh, summons number one uh, dated the 10th of December 2021 uh, was issued to Mr. Uh, Fergo Ota Kiniafa, who is the managing director for PNG Ports Corporation Limited. <coughs> Uh, that summons uh, uh, is returnable this morning, but uh, <coughs> uh, Mr. Mr. Kinney Alpha has sought an extension by way of a letter uh, dated 13 December 2021. They propose that this summons, that is summons number one, be extended to uh, the 17th of uh, January. 2022. Uh, Commissioner, uh, we have no uh, objections uh, to the proposed uh, date. Uh, therefore, if 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 uh, the commissioner could, uh, if you could give uh, directions uh, uh, to the effect, please. Thank you, Council. Having considered the submissions raised by counsel and the position of the witnesses as indicated, I hereby direct that summons number one dated 10 December 2021, which was issued to PNG Ports Corporation Limited, is extended to Monday 17 January 2022 at about 9.30 a.m. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner, I move on to summons number two. Summons number two is also dated 10 December 2021. It was issued to uh, Kumul Consolidated Holdings Limited, uh, in particular to Professor David Kavarna Moore, who is the managing director. Commissioner, KCHL have also sought an extension uh, by way of a letter to us dated the 16th of 2021. They wish or propose to extend the summons uh, to the 19th of January 2022. Uh, we, our position is that we have no objections to the proposed date. So, again, if uh, 
uh, if you could give uh, similar directions uh, uh, for this this summons, summons number two, to be extended to 19 January 2022. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Council. Having considered the submissions raised by Council and the position of the witnesses as indicated, I hereby direct that summons number two, dated December 2021, is it to Kumul Consolidated Holdings Limited. Dated is extended to Wednesday, 19 January 2022, at about 9.30 a.m. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. I'll hand it over to uh, Mr. Gero to do with someone's three and four. Commissioner, in relation to summons number three, that was issued to Curtin Brothers Holdings in brackets NG Limited. That was dated the 10th of December 2021. It was actually served after that on, on about the 13th of, of um, December 2021. In response to that, we have received a letter from Ashurst lawyers who act for Curtin Brothers Holdings Limited. And in that letter, they amongst other things, sought an extension of time, which we do not object to, and we have conveyed that in writing to Ashurst lawyers by letter dated 16th December 2021. And as such, um, in, brother, in that letter, we've actually stated that we have no objection to the production of an initial tranche of documents by 4 p.m. on 31 January 2022, with the balance of the documents to be produced by 4 p.m. on 20. 8 February 2022. Commissioner, in those circumstances, we would at this stage ask that the summons number three issued to Curtin Brothers Holdings Limited, Holdings NG Limited, be extended to the 31st of January 2022 at 9.30 a.m. Thank you, Council. Having considered the submission raised by Council and the position of the witnesses as indicated, I hereby direct that summons number three, dated 10 December 2021, issued to Caton Brothers Holding Limited is extended to Wednesday, 2nd February 2022 at about 9.30 a.m. Thank you. As the, as the Commission pleases. There's, a, there's also the similar, similar position in relation to summons number four that was issued to Bellymore number 39. And also if similar directions could be made for the same reasons as outlined earlier. I note, um, I note, Commissioner, that I did incorrectly state that the, the return date to be 20, 31st January, and I apologize. As correctly put by the Commission, the date of, for return of the summons should be the 2nd of February, 2022. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Yes, Commissioner, if you could just uh, read, uh, read, read considered, the formal, yes, the formal uh, Having considered the submissions raised by Council and the position of the witnesses as indicated, I hereby direct that summons number four dated 10 December 2021 issued to Balimo number 39 limited Dated is extended to Wednesday, 2nd February 2022, at about 9.30 a.m. Commission, please. Uh, Mr. Commissioner, there being no further matters, uh, we would ask that the Commission, subject to the position of the Commission, that the hearings for this morning be, be adjourned.